Research and innovation in Futuris. It's an eerie night on the Loire River in western France. We're on the trail of a mysterious fish. The boat isn't moving at all. The current washes the fish towards the net. The net narrows progressively and the fish are trapped inside. But after three hours, the catch thins out. For the last two or three years, we've noticed stocks diminishing. The fish come down the river in waves, and there are peaks of migration, but then afterwards, there's nothing. Researchers confirm the steep decline of European eels. They're now an endangered species. Wild stocks in Europe are half what they were just a few years ago. The decline of the eel makes me worry about our planet because it shows we're incapable of looking after a resource that was once abundant here. Don't forget the eel was considered a pest in France until 1984 because it was so plentiful it was thought to be harming other species like salmon and trout. So we've gone from great abundance to alarming decline. Why? EU scientists are trying to answer this question through researching the eel's biology and curious migratory patterns. Small bones are analysed to determine at what age the eels leave European rivers to spawn somewhere around the Sargasso Sea in the Atlantic Ocean. This is a Spanish eel. It returned to the sea at around the age of 16. We've seen them returning even later in northern Europe. I've seen 30-year-old eels there. The explanation is either that pollution forces the eels to leave earlier or a change in water temperature. That's what we're studying. These researchers leave no stone unturned. Scientific fishing starts early in the morning, and the task is far from easy. First, the researchers need to find the right size specimens. The tanks we use are very heavy, so we have to find the biggest fish we can. They have to weigh at least two and a half kilos for the external satellite tags. For the internal tags, they can be a bit less, about one and a half kilos. So that's why we sort them out with the fishermen. These eels are amongst the biggest you can get in the Loire River. The animals are measured and weighed. Their eyes and skin are also studied and catalogued. Meanwhile, biologists study information from other tags, if they can be recovered, that record depth and seawater temperature. This release mechanism ejects the tag from the eel. This is buoyant, so it, drifts, it rises to the surface and hopefully drifts ashore. And on the, on the tag here is a reward message and an address for somebody you can contact and, and give the tag back and you get a reward for it. And we get the data. Back on the Loire, the eels are anaesthetized. And then surgery can start. So now I'm just putting a syringe just in under the skin. And now I'm getting this surgical 
wire just in through the hole. Just that's going to hold the tag. Now we are attaching the tag to the wires. And again, closing up. It won't come off. Uh, this tag will stay on for about two months. Then the tag will pop off, rise to the surface. It's floating, and hopefully it will be recovered. Similar tags in Ireland, Spain and Sweden have already confirmed that eels can travel up to 45 kilometers per day and swim as deep as 1,200 meters while migrating in Atlantic waters. But questions remain. What we see here is that the eels move from cooler water in the daytime to warmer water in the night. So this movement may have something to do with temperature regulation. It may also have something to do with the way that the eel senses where it is in the world. Um, and these large vertical movements enable the eel to detect where it is using the, ma the strength of the magnetic field of the Earth. So it um, assesses the relative strength of that in shallow and deeper water and thereby works out its position. It could be a way of assessing the time of dawn if the eels can detect light at 300 meters because at that depth, really, virtually all light is extinct. It's almost total darkness down there. So we don't really understand why the eel is doing this, but clearly it's a really fundamentally significant behavior. And by understanding why the eels behave like that, we might be able to understand the impacts of things like pollutants, disease, and parasites, if it makes the eels less able to do this, or if it takes them more energy to do this. Tagged eels are ready for their journey of around 5,000 kilometers to their spawning grounds. It's a journey that researchers hope will provide plenty of scientific data, not just to ensure the well-being of the fish and the future of the food market it feeds, but also for the sake of ecosystems all over the earth. Eels are great migrators. When we find an eel in a big river like the Rhine or the Loire, that means that eels can swim upstream and live there. When there are no eels in these rivers, it's a sign that lots of things are wrong. Migratory fish demonstrate their liberty on the aquatic planet.